Vertical stabilization is necessary for shots where one walks around, or the camera is attached to a car, or any movement that might generate rapid camera jerks or other unwanted motion of the camera. 360 movies with such camera motion are very hard to watch without stabilization, and Relens' stabilization process improves the watchability of such movies and gives more latitude while shooting such video. Most traditional stabilizers don't work on this type of material, and if we stabilize the source 360 videos, then when converting to rectilinear material, whether an editorial or with a 360 viewer, we never run out of pixels at the frame edges. In this tutorial, we will see how to use Relin's spherical stabilizer to stabilize your 360 VR footage. The first thing to notice is that we're working directly on the 360 VR footage with no additional workflow that entails projecting to cube faces. The basics are pretty simple. You will find the spherical stabilizer within Relens Superfish, 2 lat long, and from lat long. And in this example, I'm using 2 lat long. First, we want to make sure our project is set to full resolution. It will give you a little reminder if you forget. You will want to make it full resolution for the best tracking results. I applied the plugin to lat long and used the default mode lat long to lat long. Nothing to set. There are two kinds of tracking. I can twirl open the spherical stabilizer to find the options here. The points tracking option is faster, but if you're not getting the results you want, you can try the patches option which is computationally more expensive, but might give you better results. Now I can press track. Note, there are no areas that need to be selected or points manually tracked or guided by the user at this point. You simply press the track button, which analyzes the footage. Okay, we're done tracking, and now we can go to the timeline and twirl open to display the spherical stabilizer. Notice it generated all these keyframes. This is a pretty long sequence. The stabilizer then uses the tracking data to transition the track data between each selected key. In other words, the frames with the keys do not get stabilized, only the frames in between. Often that's it, you're done and hit render. But sometimes the auto keyframing doesn't put the keys where you would like. So now we explain how you can adjust the keyframes to stabilize between frames you want instead of the auto selected keys. For example, here at frame 569, if I go to the keyframe before at frame 478 and after at frame 686 that the tracker selected, we can see that the horizon line is straighter than at frame 569. We do show the track data if we look at the graph, but this is not meant to be edited. Okay, back to that horizon line and those keyframes that the tracker selected. Often what you're trying to do is select frames where the horizon line, or implied horizon line if it's not visible, is more straight than not. In any event, you can select exactly which frames you want to stabilize between. So going back to keyframe 478 and 686, you can see that the horizon line is straighter on those keyframes, and therefore make good keyframes to interpolate between. But the keyframe that's set at 569 doesn't give us a straight horizon line. We will want to delete that keyframe. When adding and deleting keyframes for the stabilization key setting, make sure to set stabilization mode to bypass so that you can see all the original frames before they're stabilized. I can make sure I'm back at frame 569 and delete the keyframe. I happen to know that frame 543 is more straight, so I'm going to add a keyframe there. Also, frame 609 is more straight, so I'm going to add another keyframe there. Now I'm done manually adding keyframes, so I will go back and switch the mode from bypass to keyframed and render my result. One last note, if the auto-selected keyframes are not working for you and you don't have time to select keyframes manually, you may try the option moving average which ignores the keys but simply smooths for the number of frames in the time on either side of the current time. The way you would do that 
is to choose the moving average from the pull down menu for stabilization mode and then you indicate a number here next to moving average. 60 is the default number which would be 60 frames on either side but you can experiment with that. You can see the difference using the spherical stabilizer.